Well, here I am. On the live stream, I'm hoping that people show up. I know I am a few minutes late. I got stuck in traffic on my way here. Hello there. I was trying to be on time, but as usual, I'm on, on CP time. And what can I say? It's like that sometimes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm glad you were able to find me. See, I gave up on that creating an event thing and just pressed that button and said, go live. And ah, here I am. This is great. So um, let's see. Let's give everybody you know, a minute or two to, to get in here. Um, what I wanted to talk, what I'm going to talk about today was triggered by the succession of advice letters that have come in over the last week or two. I keep seeing the same pattern where the women who are writing have little to no boundaries and what that, how that looks in you know real life because you know I'm I'm gonna explain what that means, but what it looks like. Hey everybody, what it looks like in a relationship is a woman who basically stands for nothing. She has no limits. She has no standards. She has no self protection in place. Whatever the man wants to do, say, be. Whatever. I mean, she's okay with it. And a lot of the women here, um, you know, that were writing those letters, I was shocked at how many of them were in awful situations. I mean, the man even told them to their face, I don't want to be with you. And then here they are writing me saying, well, you know, should I try to get him back? No, what's wrong with you? Oh, I have said that sentence so many times this week. It just makes my head swim. And I don't understand, um, you know, how someone could have so little value on their heart and so so little value about who they are and what they have to offer and how they should be treated. And I came to a couple of conclusions. One is that a lot of women obviously are, you know, were raised with church principles. You know, I say church because, you know, even though it may be one branch of Christianity, Catholicism, whatever, there's some, some, unifying message that they're getting that men are more important than them. Men are more important. Men are to be honored and respected and cherished and, you know, submitted to and listened to and, and followed and because the man is the automatic leader. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in young girls' minds that have been, that stuff jammed down their throat so that they are, They've been socialized to feel like they're a second class person. So here I come along telling them, <laughs> the hell you are. You are first class. You are equal or even better than any man that's walking the face of this earth. And they need to treat you that way. That's a foreign concept to a lot of these women. They're like, what? What do you mean? That's not how I was raised. You know, they like want to fight with you and stuff. And um, it's very, um, hey, everybody. No, I'm not talking about Chloe Kardashian because I don't know nothing about her. I, I saw her face on something, but if she was walking down the street, I wouldn't know who she was. Um, I'm talking about the women who, you know, had contact with me on a personal level. These are advice columns and stuff. And um, these advice letters, I mean. And it just was really sad. It just made me think, okay, this is something we really need to talk about and make young ladies understand that it's okay to have boundaries. And uh, it's okay for you to say no. It's okay for you to tell your children no, to tell them to get out your face and go do something with themselves so you can have some private time. It's okay to not be this like never ending breast of support and services to the men in your lives, including your brothers and husband and, you know, whatever, whoever else. It's OK for you to just be you. And uh, that's so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about these boundaries. Hey, everybody. I was like more and more people showing up. I'm glad to see you. And uh, excuse my lateness. I was you know a little on CP time. But let's talk about, you know, so where's my notes? Oh, I printed them out 
I'm gonna put on my glasses so I can see. Oh, I got new reading glasses. Look, they have bling on them. I got bling it. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, let's see. Let's get to So what is the purpose of boundaries? I had to make some notes so, you know, I would stay on track because you know how I get to, get to talking and I'll be over there talking about Mars or something. And you guys be like, hey, you're supposed to be talking about boundaries. So I made like an outline to keep myself on, uh, to, on, on track. So what are the purposes of boundaries? Boundaries can start with... Um, communicating your needs. Do you know how many women are afraid to tell a man what they want? Why are they afraid to tell him? I can only think of one reason, because they're afraid that if what she wants and what he wants are different, that he will leave her. There's a lot of women have a lot of fear of abandonment. But let me, let me tell you a secret. If you want something different than what he wants, it's a wrap anyway. I mean, you just playing around with them and you, you know, you might be having a good time with them and all that stuff, but what you claim that you want is never going to happen if he's not on that same page. And so you need to know that and the sooner the better. So, you know, I mean, it's nice. You want to get to know somebody and I said, but you know, this conversation about what you were looking for, it should happen, you know, relatively quickly, like within a month or two. And then if he's not looking for what you're looking for, then, I mean, you know, why waste your time? Just tell him, you know, that's okay. But a lot of you women are afraid to do that. You're afraid to say, because, you know, well, I might end up single. Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to be alone, you know, but, but, you know, that just makes me sound like I'm bitter and controlling. No, it doesn't. It just makes it sound like you're a woman that knows what the fuck you want in your life. And if he ain't going to give it to you, then boop, out you go. It's not, it's not mean. And it's like, even if, it, just to say that it is mean, okay, you are mean to this man that you are not going to marry. Why do you care? You'll never see him again. What difference does it make if you're mean to him? You know what I mean? It's like, what's the problem? Hey, Tiff. Oh, look at this. You know, I've done, um, I know it ain't nothing wrong with being single. I'm telling you. It's really like, you know what happens? A lot of times women are single, right? And then they get married and then they start wishing they was back single. And I'm like, ooh, this is this is terrible. So, you know, that's one of the main things about um, boundaries is it establishes some parameters, like a fence. It puts up a fence around your heart, which you can open the door and let people in, but it just, it puts up a little protective barrier so that you don't go outside of it when you don't need to be doing that and you don't let fools in either. That's what a boundary is. But if you don't have any boundaries, see any guy who comes along who says he likes you or who wants a marriage or who wants a relationship or something like that, you don't quote, give him a chance. No, you, that's not how you handle yourself. You waste a lot of time of your, a lot of years of your life on that stuff. Okay. So that's one thing. Another thing that boundaries do is protect your time. It protects your space, your property, and your privacy. So that's a lot in one. So let's break that down. Um, I had this boyfriend. This is this, this, this. Okay, let me not. Okay, we were dating, and I had some things, you know, at his house. And come to find out, his sister had come over, and he let her use my stuff. Okay, I had a fit because, see, to me. A, she crossed boundaries. It's like, you should have known better than that. And then he didn't seem to have any either because he just let his sister do use my, you know, my personal stuff, like my lotion, my toothpaste, uh, you know, some stuff I had like that, my deodorant. You know, that's touching your skin. You don't, you don't really share stuff like that. And uh, I had a real problem with that. So then he's like, well, what do you want me to do? I said, throw all that shit away because I'm never using it again. And he thought that I was kidding and that something was wrong with me. I'm like, no, you know, you didn't, he, you didn't respect my privacy and my property. And so, you know, this is that. So that, that was, you know, that was one thing. And a couple other things happened. Anyway, I dumped him because I could see that we were, you know, we didn't have like the same level of respect for what belongs to someone else and when what uh, it belongs to you. And so you don't, if it doesn't belong to you, you don't have a right to loan it to anyone, to let anyone use it. 
you know, to take it, nothing, because it's not yours. And that's the pro- real problem that a lot of people have, even in marriage. Yes, my deodorant girl, I'm telling you, I'm looking at that shit, trying to see if I see the arm hairs or anything. I was so grossed out. I cannot tell you how nasty I thought that was. I chunked that stuff, boop, right into the garbage can. And uh, no, he didn't see a problem with it. But see, this is an example of what I'm talking about. If I didn't have any boundaries, then I would have been okay with that, you know? And see, but I, I, I have very strict boundaries. You ain't gonna use my shit. And if you do use my shit, then I'm, you know, throwing it away. So after that, you know, I, I still dealt with him for maybe another couple of weeks, a month or something. When I would go to his house, I had like a little travel bag thing, and I would bring my stuff with me. And then when I left, I took my stuff when I went because we wasn't gonna have that anymore. Yeah, I hate I hate people using my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. Even when I had roommates and stuff, you know, they want to wear your clothes. No, bitch, don't touch my shit. Don't touch nothing of mine. And this one girl, you know, that was she was a friend of one of my roommates. This girl, had, I don't know what was, I don't know if she had a medical problem or what, but she had like this heavy body odor. And uh, so she wore the silk blouse that I had to go on a job interview. I didn't give her permission. To, my roommate gave her permission to wear it. She, she wore the silk blouse that I had. And that the smell of her armpits would never come out of that blouse. I tried washing it. I dry cleaned it. I used wool light. I used all kinds of stuff to try to save my blouse. And it, it just went. So finally, I just gave it to her. I'm like, you know, you I'm basically like you funk this up to the 10th degree. I don't want it no more. Ew. Yeah, just, but she didn't think she was funky. I'm just telling you, I could smell her, you know, very heavy body smell. And uh, the Chinese call that a horsewoman. There's a long story with that. We'll have to talk about their deer woman, horsewoman, rabbit woman, and all that kind of stuff at some point. So, you know, that was, that was an issue. Okay. Now another boundary thing, what boundaries do is provide you with an opportunity to to take care of yourself. So you put yourself first and that's, this is another problem that I I noticed is that um, you guys want to please everybody else. You want to be accepted. You want to be liked. You think that you have to earn somebody's love and affection. And the thought of someone, you know, rejecting you or abandoning you sends you into a tailspin. So you go into this like super nice mode where you don't say no. And, you know, and then you talk real timidly to people like, you know, they say something, um, something. Oh, say they want you to do something right. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Well, you know, uh, 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 let me think about it. Um, uh, you know, instead of saying "fuck no," I'm not interested in that shit. Get out of here with that. I don't want. I'm no. That ain't happening. See, that's me. But you know, some people say my boundaries are too strong. I'm like, no, they're not. They're just not. You just not used to have, seeing a woman that has some, so you think it's too much. But in reality, more women need to have boundaries you guys come on it's like these women in the wrote in the letters um you know that we did the last two days you know leaving a situation that was hurtful that was um harmful where a man was calling them a bitch and a hoe and all kind of stuff like that and telling them that she you know this one with that she had a coochie that was like the size of a tunnel or something and i mean all kind of just rude and funky things and she kept dealing with him I would have clocked that motherfucker and tried to brain him. But, you know, she she was okay with it. So that's what let me know. She had no boundaries, no self-protection field at all because she just let this man verbally and emotionally abuse her and she stayed with him looking for more. Ah, oh, that just hurt my heart. I just, I don't know what's, what's the problem. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would leave that MF. Oh, heck yeah, without a missing a beat. So, um, and also by setting boundaries, basically what you're establishing is uh, rules for other people for how they're going to treat you. So, you know, we had a lady who wrote yesterday was talking about how her aunt was always like, you know, trying to throw shade her way, talking about, you know, you picking up weight and all this stuff. And I'm like, "Mm -mm." and she's trying to be respectful because she felt like it was her auntie. I gives no fucks. Just because we accidentally related, that don't mean shit. You don't get to treat me any kind of way just because you think you older than me and we got some bloodline shared somewhere down the line. That, That don't give you no pass to act a fool with Deb. And, um, 
But, you know, she was kind of, she was in a mode where she was dealing with it and she was taking it. But see, to me, if she had a good, strong boundary in that, when her aunt said that mess the first time, she would be like, whoa, wait a minute. Who you think you talking to? I'm like that. You don't talk to me like that. You got me twisted. You got some shit twisted and confused with somebody else. Yeah, I'm your niece, but that don't mean nothing. You better talk to me with respect, auntie, or we just won't be talking at all. How about that? See, you know what I mean? She didn't have to cuss her out or anything, but she did. She was supposed to check her so that she would understand she had crossed the boundary and she best not do that again or we're going to have a problem. But she didn't do that. You know, and that was that's the overriding thing with you guys. We're going to need kickboxing. <laughs> Riri said, my auntie would have caught these hands. <laughs> Yeah, you are. You, it is accidentally related. I'm sorry because I didn't have a choice in this matter. When I came out, I was related to you. That was a fucking accident as far as I'm concerned because I had no choice in the matter. Even You didn't even have a choice in the matter. It just happened. So, you know, it's out of our control. So that's an accident. So those are things. Oh, and the self-respect part. You know, you you get to feel good about yourself when you have boundaries. And I know that's a that's like a foreign concept to a lot of women. It's like, how could you feel good about yourself because you tell other people? No, it's I can't even describe the feeling. It's like you have this like, oh, go, girl. You know, you really took care of yourself. You uh, made a statement. You, you know, won't let other people talk to you any old kind of way. You won't let people treat you any old kind of way. That boosts your self-esteem. It makes you feel better about yourself. It increases your level of confidence, your level of respecting yourself. And then you get do it more and more. And so it becomes like the cycle of positive talk and action that you are doing. But you got to get on the path first by learning to say no and be learning to set um, some boundaries. Yes, honey. No. Hey, oh, did, didn't I do a video about no? No, hell no, fuck no, hell to the no, nah. all kind of stuff, all kind of different ways that you could conjugate no and use it like, you know, as an adjective, as a noun, as a verb, you know, as adverb. I mean, all this stuff, you could use the word no with different prefaces and endings and stuff. And, you know, no is a fabulous word. Okay, that's right. Little kids, honey, they have that no down two years old, they got it. They just be working it. Okay. So let's see, let's talk about some reason. Liza <laughs> said, can I borrow some money? No, that's right. Can I spend the night at your house? No. Can I drive your car? No. Well, can you write this letter for me? No. Can you be a reference for me? Oh, hell no. You're a trifling piece of shit ass. I don't think so. Well, can you, you know, they always want you to do something. And it's always something that's going to put you in a situation where it's going to be some drama. Like women get caught in that, like the dude say, well, you know, hold this, hold this for me. You know, and there's some, you know, illegal, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you know, let me just put this here. Let me just, and then when a woman gets caught with it, see, he goes scot-free and she the one that gets hit with the time. No, we ain't doing that. No. Okay. So let's talk about why so many women are afraid to set boundaries. Why are you guys afraid to do that? Um, and I came up with some reasons and I'll be looking at the screen here. So if you have some reasons, you know, be sure to put them up there and I will try to catch it because the screen's going so fast. OK, my number one thing that I think it is, is fear of rejection. Like I said a little while ago, you guys are free, afraid that nobody's going to want you, that men are going to reject you as being, you know, too manly or something. Um, I don't know. I don't do so many different reasons. <laughs> so afraid of being alone. Yes. Don't want to be single and lonely. That's true. And uh, yeah, so that's what I thought. You know, they're afraid of a guy rejecting them, you know, calling them names and stuff. You know, that's why you singled out of those stuff. Fear of abandonment. A lot of black women especially have this fear of abandonment because they have been abandoned by caregivers and you know parents and stuff over and over and over again before they even get to adulthood. And so I you know I understand that. But what I'm saying is you cannot let you let yourself be put in a position where you don't take care of yourself because you're worried about somebody else's feelings. You know, I mean my, my motto on that, and I started saying this when I was about nine or 10 years old and I first heard about William Shakespeare, better thee than me. 
That's my motto on all of this kind of stuff. So if somebody's feelings going to be hurt, it's going to be you. Better thee than me. If somebody's going to be feeling all out of sorts and, you know, like they didn't get what they want. Oh, it's not going to be me. It's going to be you. So that's it. That's my that's my phrase. And I got that from William Shakespeare. I read uh, Romeo and Juliet. Don't ask me why I was reading it, because <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy as a kid. But I read it and I liked how thee, thou, and this, thou, and all that kind of stuff. That really was interesting to me. So, you know, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment. The third thing is guilt. You have a lot of guilt. Um, hmm. How to deal with your temper as a woman. Please. Me and my temper's best friends. <laughs> That's my buddy. <laughs> so, um, guilt. Okay. You have a you have a fear of not being nice. You know, because think about how many kids you times you heard as a little girl, you know, be nice. You know, you have to say nice things. You know, oh, she's so nice. You know, we we women are always referred to as nice. You know, she's nice, she sings nice, she looks nice. You know, she behaves nicely. She's whatever. It's always some niceness. And you guys set that as a standard that you try to achieve. See, my motto is, see, I'm telling you guys all my thing. My motto is fuck nice. I'm not trying to be nice. You know, I'll be nice to the, my, my listeners and stuff. But, you know, like soon as you know that somebody come on here talking some shit to me, what do I do? I bite their fucking head off. And it's like, you know, you, you and don't you come in here thinking you're going to talk about any of my channel visitors either. Because I'm going to chew you a new ass on that as well. No, you're not going to do that. You're going to treat the people here with respect. If you can't do that, get your ass on. And um, this thing, you know, you don't want to put, you want to put others first. You want to take care of them. That's some codependent mess. You putting other people, you worried about other people's problems, what other people's needs are, what other people like, what other people want. And you're sacrificing a part of yourself and your needs um, because you want them to like you. You don't want them to be upset at you. You don't want them to be upset at all. So you do all this stuff, bend over backwards and jump through hoops to help other people. And you're sacrificing, you're hurting yourself because you're giving parts of yourself or your property, your money, your time, whatever, in a way that you it's hurting you. See, that's that's a boundary that you need to set up. Yeah, nice for what? Yes, the burnt toast syndrome. That's right. No, you you know what's so good about these? Because you guys actually watch my videos. So you actually know the titles and stuff. This is really interesting to me. So women who had an inability to say no for fear of number one and two, which is fear of rejection and fear of abandonment. Um, very sad. Because, you know, the bottom line is, even if you have a man, in your life and you guys are, you know, reasonably close or whatever. Um, shit happens. You know, relationships end. People die. People decide they don't want to be in a relationship with you anymore. They like somebody else better. You know, what? what I mean, you might like somebody better. I mean, shit happens. So things aren't always the same. Um, so what you have to do is not really be afraid of that. You know, as long as someone is willing to love you and willing to be there with you, that's that's the extent of it. That's as far as you need to go. You don't need to worry about anything else. You can't make somebody um, love you the way that you want them to. You can't force someone to love you. So you guys need to stop trying that. Be yourself. Be comfortable in your own skin. And then if someone does decide that they love you, you can be really confident and be relaxed in a relationship because you know that they're seeing the real you and they're loving the real you, not the front that you put up because you try to be nice and codependent and not, you know, be, feel guilty about saying no and, and, quote, be nice and, you know, all this stuff. You don't want them to reject you. So you're going overboard. All right. Mm. Number five, fear of being clear and direct. That's very often, you know, directness, assertiveness and all that. It's very often seen as a very masculine trait. So that uh, when a woman is that way, they say that she's mannish, she's masculine, she's not feminine. Because women tend to be this, you know, men expect women to be this timid kind of um, docile, docile creature. They don't want you to say, you know, no with any definitive kind of no definitive responses. They want you to give them what they want you to give them. And if you don't don't do that, then you become bitter. You're a bitch. 
you're, you know, a bed wench, you a, a, a sellout, you all kind of things. If you tell men, especially black men, that um, uh, oh, Sharon P, um, if you could send that question in to the website, um, that would be helpful. And, you know, kind of expound on that a little bit. And then I can put that in a column because I'm looking for some more good questions for this weekend. Um, so, you know, it's like they say that men have like men have the, the patent on on being assertive and, and having strength and determination and focus and strong words and, you know, all of stuff being decisive. They act like women can't do that. And if a woman does that, she's being masculine. It's like, you know, she just being a person with some damn sense. She's not being a, you know, some little weak damsel. Then that's what they like because they want to be able to control the women. Also, it means, you know, you don't, you don't give in to men, right? You don't give in to them. So they say, well, you know, you should this and you should that. And, you know, well, why not? Well, this and, that. and see, this is a thing I learned. <laughs> what can I do if my husband is stupid? <laughs> well, like I said last night. Get a new stupid man because they all stupid. You just have a new stupid. <laughs> just like, at least it'll be different. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you know, this don't give in to men thing. Um, I was going to say something about that and I forgot. Oh, oh, I remember now. Okay. I used to have, when I was about seven or eight years old, um, some of my cousins that lived in Oakland, had come to stay with us for the summer and they was going to live, learn um, how to do, you know, like home remodeling and carpentry and stuff from my dad. Cause they were both, both of them's fathers, uh, you know, had died. So they came over and they stayed with us all summer. We had a big old 10 room house. So there was plenty of room for them to be there. They each had their own room because we had all kind of extra space. And, uh, you know, every morning they would get up and they go do some work in, in my dad's apartment buildings with him remodeling, putting in, you know, stoves and refrigerators, learning wiring, all kind of stuff. Gave them some, some job skills. And I remember, because they used to go, you know, they were aged where they could go out to nightclubs and go on dates and stuff. You know, like I said, I'm like seven or eight years old, but I would listen to everything. I was an ear hustler from way back. And he, my, my cousin Poe, his name was Napoleon, but we used to call him Poe. Poe, was like tall and handsome and all the women used to love him. Oof, he just was like the shit. And he was telling me once he was talking to our other cousin and my oldest brother one time and telling them that the it wasn't hard to get women to do what you want. And I'll never forget this lady. This is why I stick to my guns and why I say no to men so well. My own cousins were talking about this and making jokes about women and saying uh, that women all you have to do is keep asking them because they're going to eventually give in and give you what you want. So they keep asking and, uh, you know, pressuring her and saying, well, why not? Well, you should do this for me. I thought you loved me. You know, what kind of relationship is this? You know, the man's supposed to, you know, whatever, whatever game they was going to throw at her. They was like, you know, lobbing these things at these girls. And then each one of them said that, Within a day or two, at the most, the woman would give in and do what they wanted her to do. Okay, that was the turning point for me. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like I said, I was seven years old. I was a very stubborn child because I would say no, and I would really mean it. But because um, I know one night my mother tried to make me eat some corned beef hash, and she said, you can't get it from that table until you eat it. Midnight, my ass was still sitting there. And my dad finally had <laughs> pity on me and made, let me go to bed. But my mother was just as stubborn as me. And I was not eating that dog food ass shit. I don't know what that shit is. I still don't look at it. People talk about corned beef hash. I'm like, you are crazy. That You don't know what that shit is. It could be dry, crunchy roaches blended up in there with some alleged potatoes. I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not eating this. I didn't like what it looked like. I didn't like how it smelled. And so that's to give you an idea how stubborn I am at such a young age. Age and how would I say no? That's what I mean. You ladies need to get like that. You know, I'm not saying you're gonna have because I, you know, I was little, I was like six or seven years old, and I already had that personality. So I'm not saying that you have to be born with that that personality. I'm using that as an example of 
how you have, must stick to your guns. So if you tell a man, if you cheat on me, we're over. When he cheats, you, the relationship has to be over. You can't be like, well, you know, I'm going to give him another chance, isn't that? Oh, you know. Uh, uh, eh. Okay, because now what you do by doing that, you have just taught him that you don't mean shit that you say and that he can do whatever he wants to and your ass is going to still be with them. That's what that means. That's what you're teaching him. You're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, but I love him. I just, you know, I just want to be with him. He didn't mean it. You know, he asked for my forgiveness. And you kind of come up with all kind of excuses why you're going to stay with that cheating, lying motherfucker. And then you be want to try to write me later when the dude, when the dude's, you know, been cheating on you for a year or two now and just comfortable with it. That's that's like, you know, he wakes up and eats breakfast and then cheats. I mean, it's like part of his routine. And you want to write to me and ask me what you should do. You should have done what you know you should have done soon as he did it the first time. So you taught him that you don't mean anything that you say and that you're weak. And once a man knows that you weak for him, it's over. It's game over. And so, you know, you have no boundaries about anything. I mean, you know, he might hit you. He twists your arm. He calls you a bitch. He stands you up on a, you know, for a date. All of these kind of things are things that you have to have boundaries about. Okay. If I'm dating a man and he stands me up, that means he don't give a fuck about my time, nor does he give a fuck about me. He just want to do what he want to do. That's what that means. But somehow you all turn it around in your heads. Well, you know, I'm going to give him another chance. You know, maybe it was an emergency. Maybe sign yeah, yeah. And knowing full well that that's not what happened. He did that shit on purpose because he was testing you to see what kind of character that you have. And then you don't do nothing. You don't say nothing. Nothing changes. He has no repercussions for his behavior. You do the same shit with your kids. If you don't stop doing that, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to I'm tell you. And you don't do that. You don't bust the grape. All you do is ring, 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 running at the mouth. And then your kids learn the same thing, that they don't have to um, do what you say because you're not going to do nothing. Nothing changes. There's no repercussions for their behavior. There's no punishment. They suffer no consequences. That is what it means when you set up a boundary. And it's like my mother used to tell us, okay, and she would warn us, right? Okay, if you do blah, 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 you're going to get a punishment. Or if you do blah, 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 you're going to get a spanking. Okay, now she had already told us this is the crime and this is the punishment. If you don't want that punishment, then don't do this crime, right? She was very open about it, very honest. We just sit down and tell you calmly and everything. So we would go, you know, okay, and then go do it anyway. And then be acting all brand new when she beat our ass or we, you know, we got on the restriction or our favorite stuff. We couldn't watch TV, whatever, whatever was the punishment. You know, she would levy it without missing a beat, without batting an eye. But see, that's somebody who means what they say and say what they mean. Hey, everyone, every other new people who just came in here, honey, I'm trying to tell you the boundaries. You've got to have them. You've got to have them and you must stand strong behind them. So let's talk about this and you guys can put some, some um, things, some information here. I'm going to ask you a question and you can put your answer in the thing here. Yeah, you punched him in his mouth. That's right. I tripped my brother down the stairs. I forgot what he did to me. Did something and I waited for his ass at the top of the stairs. And he came around that corner and I stuck my little foot out. I was about six. I was an evil little child. But I flipped his ass. He went all down all 12 of them stairs. And you think I cared? I bet you he never did that shit again. See, that's what I'm talking about. You got you, know, you do stuff that's wrong. And uh, oh, I remember what he did. He took my baby doll and pulled the arms off. <laughs> and did, I don't know where he put the arm. So he had this armless doll, you know. And I'm like, what the hell? What's this? What did he do that for? He just did it to torture me. You know how brothers do. But I was like, uh uh, you go, you going down the stairs. Yes, girl, I listened to Dolly when I just, <laughs> I couldn't put the little dresses and stuff on her anymore. He was a mess. Oh, my dad brought me a new, a new one, you know what I mean? But just in that moment, I just wanted him to die. And it's like the best thing I could think of was to make him fall down the stairs. So he was all banged up. <laughs> yeah, well, we still talk about that, but I forgave him eventually. So, okay, now let's see. Okay, we talked about fear being clear, clear and direct. And you guys tell me in the thing here, 
what are some areas that you noticed you didn't have boundaries in? Something that happened maybe where you didn't have. <laughs> I sure did, J.D. <laughs> he was all kinds of bruised up and had scratches and shit. Because we used to have those kind of walls that were popular in the 60s, I guess. You know, they had it was like this this pokey stuff. Um, I don't, it was like textured. I think that's what they used to call it. Textured wall. So it was like sharp. And so he fell down the stairs. He was scraping on that stuff as he went down. So when he got to the bottom, he was all kinds of fucked up, <laughs> bleeding and everything. See, notice how I feel amused. But I bet you he never touched no more of my dolls. I tell you that. <laughs> okay, so some of you had no boundaries at all. Hmm. Had someone coming in and out of your life? Okay. That's true. Because stucco. Yes. But it was like the pokey kind. Yeah, but it was that material. But it was like you take the paintbrush and do like this, and then it dries with these like sharp little point things on it. I meant to try to break me down in order to date me. Oh, that's a big one. Because <coughs> they don't want... um you to feel, uh, you know, strong and in control. They want you to break your ego, break you down. Men disappearing and reappearing, that's, that's a common one. But, you know, they can't come back unless y'all let them. Like I said in the video last night, sharks only swim one way. You need to be like the shark. Setting boundaries with friends and family. Shit. Being emotionally unavailable, even though they're present. Mm -hmm. I used to have no boundaries saying we would go out and then I would get stood up. Yep. Mm -hmm. We did a video chat and didn't have boundaries. Oh, that's really risky because then they want to be showing you, you know, they want to do sexy talk and show you their private parts and do all kind of stuff. Mm -mm. That's why I don't do internet dating because this was like the last time, you know, that's when webcams was really starting to get big and people would want to web chat you and be sitting there naked and, all, you know, talking about their bodies and stuff. I'm not trying to do all that. It's like, you want me to look at you, you better have a body like I don't even know what. Like, uh, who am I trying to think of? The Rock. Okay, I might want to look at that. But you some little puny looking dude and you sitting over there looking all pasty and pale and stupid with your hair jacked up and you think somebody want to be looking at you? Mm -mm. Well, Molly, don't feel bad because this is only my third. I think this is my third stream. I, I, not, this is a kind of a new thing. That's why I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm trying to get better. Yes, honey, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. That is a gorgeous man. I don't care how old he get, he's still fine. Mm, just delicious. <laughs> I love Bree Bree. I want Bree Bree to be president. <laughs> She's just crazy. Oh, uh, the Rock's head is shaped weird. Who, who's looking at his head? Wait a minute, girlfriend. You, Your focus is all in the wrong place. You need to go down about 10 inches, and there we, that's where you start looking. Don't care about the face. By the way, I think his face is cute. His head shape, I don't know about that. Okay, now let me get back to this list because y'all have me over here crying. Um, okay, a weak sense of self. Now, this is a very important one because this happens a lot online. Women, you know, these guys will try you, right, because they want to talk about you in a way that they think is going to make you, you know, feel demeaned and less of a woman and shatter your confidence and shut you down and all this stuff. So they start lobbing all these insults at you. And for a woman who has a weak sense of herself because she doesn't really have boundaries to that kind of stuff, right, she absorbs it. She lets it in instead of putting her shield up. Ha, ha, ha. And, you know, flinging that stuff off, she absorbs it as a, as some kind of um, of uh, condemnation of who and what she is. Like these Nick Nogs online really know her. But she just lets that happen. And, uh, you know, it always just bothered me. So these are women who base their opinion of themselves 
by how other people treat or talk to them. We see this a lot with the chicks, you know, talking about the colorism stuff, these memes that go around. Well, you know, this black person here said they don't like dark skinned women, this and that. And I'm like, okay, but why are you worried about what that one person who you don't even know says or who that a person dates and who that person marries? Or I mean, why are you absorbing that as something being wrong with you? Why can't you think, well, that's, it. you know, that's their choice. It's a free choice. Just like some people like, um, you know, clams and some people like, you know, chitlins and stuff. I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole, but they like it. I mean, so how is that a condemnation of me? Because they like chitlins and I don't, and they like clams and I don't. I mean, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me because I don't like clams or chitlins. It means that we're just different. They have a different taste. They have a different belief system. And that is what boundaries are about. You have the right to have some and so do they. So they don't have to you know, do with what you're talking about and neither do you have to listen to them. Dude told me I has that he has dated prettier women. I asked, why are you wasting time with my ugly ass? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes, no, no chitterl chitterlings. No, that's like, no. I mean, even when I did eat meat, no. Okay, so that's kind of a problem. I see that a lot. And you ladies have to, you know, we'll be talking about this some more. I mean, what can you do really in an hour? But it's just like kind of laying the foundation for some things I want you to start thinking about. And then, you know, in a week or two, I'll go over um, this stuff some more in deeper levels. And we're going to do like a, a, a checklist. I'm going to come up with some questions that I want to, you to answer to yourself. I mean, you don't have to put up the responses here, but I'm working on that. I didn't have time to finish it, you know, for this. So I'll, I'll schedule that for a few weeks out. And um, he ain't had no prettier women. He's a damn lie. Because it's like, okay, well, this is my thing. If he had said that to me, I'd be like, well, where's them bitches now? They looked at your ugly, funky, bad attitude, having ass, and they jetted. So, I mean, what you telling me about that for? Why do I give a fuck what, what bitch you was dating? You know, she ain't here now, is she? That's why you over here with me. So shut the fuck up. You know? Ah, man. Sometimes I wish there was some way, magical way, I could jump in you guys' body for like five minutes, cuss these folks out, and then jump back out and let you take over the rest of the day. <laughs> that would be so great. Okay, and then let's talk about this powerlessness. You know, and I've seen the women do this. It's like, okay, something happened, and they say, oh, you know, I, I have to ask my man, or I have to ask my kids if I can go. I have to see if that's okay, you know, with my husband, with my, my boyfriend, you know, this or that. I'm like, what are you, five? You know, make a decision for yourself. You don't need to ask somebody that. You know, you let a man tell you what you can wear, how you can, you know, they say like, well, you know, I have to ask him if I can cut my hair or if I can dye my hair. I'm like, what? That hair is going out of your head. It could be whatever you want. Shave it off, dye it purple with pink polka dots. I mean, you know, he might not like it, but guess what? He'll get over it. You know, it's just, that's do you, and he just going to deal with it. I'm like, this is unbelievable. So you, you know, you like, a, and some of these women like a man to tell them what to do, right? Because they say, well, you know, that's my king. You know, he runs things. You know, I, I, I submit to him and all this stuff. But basically what they're doing is putting themselves in a powerless position because they this let this man make all the decisions that impact their life and make all of the choices about, you know, them personally. And they don't they have no input into their own existence. Some of these dudes give them money so they don't have any money unless he gives it to them. You know, they don't work. They don't do anything. And so this man is like got them on a string like a marionette. And they just love it. Well, I don't know. They seem like they love it. And I'm just looking at them like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why would you want to live with some in a way like that with so, so little power? Even as a grown woman, you have none. Okay, then we have number eight, point number eight. I'm just reading them off in the order that I wrote them. They're not in any specific, sensible, logical order. Um, a lot of women aren't taught what a boundary is and have no clue how to establish one or how to maintain one. That's very unfortunate. Even sometimes, you know, people have parents that wouldn't even let them close their bedroom door. You know, you can't be in there with your door closed. You have to have the door open. Okay, that's that's not a good 
thing to have your daughter, your daughter, your children, especially your daughter. She ought to be able to change clothes and do whatever she needs to do in the privacy of her bedroom without you peering at her like a fucking freak. Okay, you know what I mean? That's just nasty to me. I don't understand that people do that. They take the doors off the key. You know, the kid cl- closes the door. They take the door off the hinges. So see, to me, those kind of people have more problems with boundaries than that child does. But they're teaching their child that they don't have the right to have a boundary. And then these children grow up to become women that don't know that they had a right to have boundaries. And it creates, creates a problem for them in their mature years. Have you ever thought about that? Oh, she said, this was my childhood. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's very deep. It's very deep, and I've seen that a lot. It's very, um, it bothers me when people do that. You know, children deserve to have quiet time, just like parents do. They can go in their room and lay on the bed and read, go in there and play their little games, play their music, you know, talk on their phone to their friends, do their homework, whatever they need to do. They should have the privacy to do that and, you know, explore their lives as teens and young adults because, you know, that... We can't live their lives for them. But, you know, they'll come out. They're not going to die in there with the door closed. What are these parents so worried about? But I've seen that a lot. And these these women who have never had that experience of having a space of their own and, and time to themselves don't know how to be by themselves. And they don't know how to establish boundaries. Yes, there are really people like that. I've met a bunch of them and they get mad, you know, when the kids close the door. What they doing in there? I take the door off the hinges so he won't be doing nothing in there that I don't know about. And I'm like, why is it so important that you know everything that your child does? It's just really weird. Yeah, they're very strange people. I'm glad my parents weren't like that. And then the last thing why some women are afraid to set boundaries is just plain out fear. Okay, they're afraid, and we see this a lot, you know, that women, okay, they're on the street, right? And here comes some, you know, raggedy nick nog. You know, I want your, I want your, um, your number. Okay, and he's, the woman may feel threatened in that moment. And so she, that she wants to say no, you know, I don't want you to have my number. But she's so afraid of, of her safe for her physical safety that she gives him her number. Okay, now a whole new bag of tricks. And so a lot of women are afraid to do that because they not do it because the dude will stand there right there and call the number while you're standing there. This is why I insist each one of you, single women, get you a Google phone number, if not Google somebody, some kind of number, and it'll have your voice. And it'll go to your voicemail and um, it will be, you know, your actual number. You get password and everything It's set up on your phone. You can have your phone's voicemail go to that. And you, you should use that if you do any kind of interaction with the public at all for work or, um, it, you know, that's the number I have on my website and stuff. People can call me. You know, I definitely want to hear from folks, but it's going to be on my time. So you call that number to leave a message and I'll call you back when I can. You ain't going to be blowing up my cell phone using my minutes. <laughs> so, you know, we do it that way. But I highly recommend that all women do that for your own safety and peace of mind. Stop giving out your actual number where they can actually, like it rings at your phone and you see it and you answer it. Don't do that. Get a number so that there's a barrier between, you see, a boundary, a barrier between you and all these people that, you know, you maintain for your safety. I'm telling you, I've had my Google number. I was one of the people that used to test, um, that they used to test market it because the first, I think it was 10,000 people nationwide, something like that, maybe 100,000, whatever it was, I was one of them. And uh, we gave feedback on, you know, what we liked and what features we'd like to see and all that kind of stuff. And then they rolled it out to the masses, I don't know, maybe six months, five months later. And uh, honey, yes, I've had my Google number for years, at least, I don't know, 11, 12 years, a long time, same number. Um, oh, probably longer than that because, let's see. Uh, one. I know I had it. What's this, 2018? Oh, shit. I've had it because I I gave it to some Jamaicans when I went to uh, Mo Bay, and that was in 2001 when Aaliyah died. And uh, I already had my Google number then because that's the number I gave them. Okay, so I've had my Google number since forever, almost 20 years. Okay. 
Now let's talk about some types of boundaries. Okay. I didn't really get to finish this. That's what I said. We're gonna have, we're gonna have to. This I only got two pages of stuff, but um, I'm hoping that this lays a good foundation. Get you guys um, to start thinking about what you know, what boundaries you are missing, and what you can set. And then we'll talk about it some more um, on the next time we talk about boundaries. Okay, now let's talk about physical boundaries. Okay. Um, you know how people like you talking to somebody, right? And they get all up in your face, right? They get all in your personal space just to talk to you. They stand too close to you in a crowd or at the, on the bus or at a bus stop or something like that. They just like all in your face. And it's like, you know, some women will just stand there and feel uncomfortable. You know, I might move away if there's space. If there's not, and this person is crowding me, especially you on a train, you where there's a train track or something, don't let nobody be crowding up behind you like that. You better step back. You know, you might not get on the train first, but you will be, be away from the edge because these motherfuckers are crazy. They pushing people on train tracks and stuff. So don't be standing all close to the, the edge and letting people crowd up behind you like that. Don't do that. So, you know, they do it and they want to touch you. Right. They want to touch you. They want to accidentally rub on you, accidentally touch your boob, touch your butt. And then, they cl- oh, you know, excuse me. No, motherfucker, you did that shit on purpose. That's why you came crowding up here, getting all in my my personal space. So, um, yeah, I, that's what I do, too. I tell them, you need to step the fuck back. Why are you crowding up on me like that? There's plenty of face space here, motherfucker. Move back. And then they just look at you crazy. It's like, it's, but they always move. I tell you that. Because you look at them like you about to pull a box cutter out and go go to town. They will, you know, you have to look, work on your crazy look. <laughs> and then, um, oh, you look approachable, not me. I look like a straight evil bitch. And I like it like that because, you know, me like I got the little chubby cheeks and stuff. I mean, I could be look very cute, but um, I um, can also twist this face into something really fierce and make people take a step back because I'm I'm evil and I like it. (laughs) All right. So let's talk about these bands. Okay, so getting too touched you, too close to you, um, touching you when you don't want to be touched. How about people that want to snoop through your phone, through your drawers, through your mail? People that show up at your house uninvited and unannounced, just show up and expect to get in. You will be ringing my doorbell till your finger turns into a nub. Your ass ain't getting in unless I invited you. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, Mm-mm, I didn't invite you to my house. What the fuck are you doing here? But, you know, I just lay in the bed and keep acting like I don't even hear the doorbell. That's what I do. Um, okay, so that's those are some physical boundaries that you, you know, maintain. Okay, emotional and intellectual boundaries. Yeah, I don't care what they do. They could go stand out there till they turn into a statue. It ain't going to change shit for me. Okay, let's see. Protect your self-esteem and your feelings. If you don't have any boundaries, then you are easily, and I talked about this a little bit, you're too easily influenced by what other people think, what other people say, what other people believe. Um, You know, you let people talk to you and treat you any old kind of way and you just accept it. You don't like, you know, fire back at them. You don't put them in check. You don't say no. You don't leave the situation. You don't, I mean, you don't take any action. And so they think by your, your, your silence, that means it's okay. And so they keep doing it. Sometimes they even up the ante to try to get you to stand up for yourself and you don't do it. Um, so these things will include your belief systems, behaviors, your choices, like people, you know, I t- talked about one time this woman, um, I was at Kincaid's here in Oakland down at Jack London Square. I talked about this in one of my videos and I still remember this because I was sitting at the table by the window and they were in the next take, you know, across the aisle from us. And uh, this girl was, the guy was trying to get her to eat steak and she didn't want to eat steak. I mean, fish rather. She wanted a steak. He kept telling her how the fish was so good. Well, you know, you should try the fish. You always eat steak. I don't like fish, she says. And she kept saying it. So this is the same kind of thing. He, he refused to accept her boundary that she didn't want any fish because she doesn't like it. I mean, she could have been allergic to it for all he knew. But, you know, it was it was like he kept pressing her. 
and she was getting tense. I mean, first she was looking at the menu, right? She's looking at the menu like this. So she actually put the menu down and she looked at dude. I don't want any fish, she says. And then she picks the menu back up. And I knew at that moment, I said, okay, this is a stupid fool right here. Whatever chance he had with her, he just blew it. Because now she knows he does no, he has no respect for her opinion and, um, you know, her desire to do things for herself the way that she wants them. He's trying to get her to do what he wants her to do. So he wasn't respecting her boundaries. And when you have a man who, who you set a boundary and he doesn't respect it, see, that's, that's an abusive individual. A very controlling and you need to get rid of him. Um, so that's that. So, uh, oh, and also your, what's your responsibility and what your desire is to be intimate. You know, some women, like there's some video floating around of some woman who's a pastor's wife saying that when you get married, that your body does not belong to you. It belongs to your husband and all this old stuff. I'm like, bitch, please. You tripping. And who's the one getting menstrual cramps every month? It ain't his nigga ass. So I hardly see how if he we was he owned this body, then he would get them too. At least half the time. That ain't happening. So uh guess what that means? I'm like, who I don't know. I don't know her name. I looked at it for like five seconds and I was like, oh, hell to the naw. Click. And I was, you know, she started talking that. That's, that's all I heard. That's all I needed to hear. The rest of it was just fine why she thought that way. But, you know, I, I heard what she her initial statement and I was done. It was a wrap. You know me. I'm like, see, that's my boundary. I'm not going to let my head be filled and my ears filled with bullshit because I need my mind for my creativity and all the stuff I talk to you guys, my analysis, my writing, all the stuff. I need my energy, positive energy in my mind for that. I cannot focus on simple bullshit like that because that would take a lot of, uh, that would be too much to absorb into my spirit. I'm very careful about what I let get into my head and into my spirit. No, that's my strictest boundary. I do not mess with, you know, do stupid, just dumb shit. Another thing is women do this a lot, right? They will sacrifice their plans, their dreams, and their goals to please other people. Like say you want to go to school. You want to become, I don't know, a nurse. You want to become a nurse. So you, the kids are in school now and you want to, um, sounding like Kanye. I don't think so. Oof, that, that, um, you want to go to, to, to you know, nursing school and he decides that you need to stay at home and be his wife. Like you agreed to do when they first, y'all first got married 10, 12 years ago. Okay, but your kids are in school now. You're not going to run this house all day by yourself. There's nothing to do. I mean, how many times you're going to vacuum and dust and polish furniture and clean windows and, you know, I mean, and do laundry. I mean, at some point, you're going to want more for yourself than feeling like a damn maid. So you want to go to school. You want to do something. This has always been a dream of yours since childhood that you want to be a nurse. But he squelches that dream by, you know, telling, trying to guilt trip you into staying at home with and be there for the kids and be there for him like you always have been. And you give up because you feel guilty about changing, uh, you know, changing on them and, and, and inconveniencing them. Whereas, you know, you get no, no benefit of your dreams. You're giving all your time, all your energy to other people to make them happy, but they ain't doing shit to make you happy. They might take you out to dinner once a year on Mother's Day or some shit on your birthday. Okay, twice a year. You get treated like you're special, and the rest of the time you doing stuff for them. Oh, hell no. I'd be like, you know what, nigga? Well, let's get a divorce then, because either way, I'm going. I mean, you don't have to like it. You don't have to accept it, but this is what's going to happen, and that's it. And just, you know, look at them. It's like, you know, we've got 12 good years. That's good enough. That lasts. That's more than a whole bunch of people's married to last. You know, I would let them know. You, know, you ain't going to be, yeah, right. you be very controlling. I'm not going to control me. You got married when you, when you were only 18? Oh, my God, you poor thing. Shoot, where was I at 18? Acting a zip damn fool. That's <laughs> definitely not trying to be nobody's wife. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, and another, the flip side of that, and you see this with a lot of men, they don't want to take responsibility for themselves. They want to blame other people for their problems and where they are in life. Well, if you didn't get pregnant, 
I would be a father and I would have more money and I could do this. That. Well, you know, maybe you should have controlled where you put your Johnson on skillet and then you wouldn't be having this problem. Maybe you should have, you know, got a vasectomy. Maybe you should have wrapped that shit up. You know, you had power here that you didn't utilize and you want to blame somebody else because you are a daddy when you what you did, you knew that was how kids are made. So don't act surprised and brand new when nine months later, baby pops out. You knew that's how they get made. Everybody learns that even at school. You know about the birds and the bees. Come on now. For real. <laughs> Divorced at 25. I'm trying to tell you that's what happens with a lot of women. You know, they get they be stuck on that, you know, I must be married thing. And then they get married and then they say, oh, wait a minute. This is some bullshit. Let me uh, let me duck. Let me duck out of here. And then they never get married again. You know, it's a whole bunch of women have been married and never get married again. So. OK, verbal boundaries. Now, these this involves how you talk to others, which is a, something that you set for yourself, as well as how. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, I'm talking so much, my throat's getting dry. As well as how you allow other people to talk to you. You know, calling your names <clears throat> and then staying in a relationship. Discounting your ideas and thoughts, trivializing, you know, what you think. <clears throat> Telling you that you're wrong because you think differently from him. Things like that. You know, you have to have boundaries where you say, no, I, and I don't need to think like you. I think like me. And that's perfectly fine and wonderful because I am me and I'm entitled to think the way that I want to think. I don't need to think the way that you think. But, you know, you got to put that. But a lot of them will be like, oh, really? OK, well, yeah, I guess you're right. And then they go along, you know, with his program. They start repeating, regurgitating the bullshit that he's talking instead of sticking to their guns. We see that all the time. Like the whole temporary chicks, they are the worst. Oof, honey. Okay. Um, oh, also under verbal, under verbal boundaries is when women talk too damn much. And I have a couple of videos about that. You sharing too much of your business with men. You tell them about your financial situation. They have access to your credit cards, your checkbook, your bank accounts, your ATM card. You know, they just know too much. They know how much salary you make. They know how much you have in your investments, how much you have in your 401k, how much your house is worth, how much you paying for your car. See, no, y'all doing too much. You do too much. You should not mean no man. He ain't paying. A, is he paying a note? That's the only reason he should know how much the car note is. He ain't paying it, then he don't need to know. Okay, same with your mortgage. He ain't contributed to your 401k, then he don't need to know what's all up in that. You see what I'm saying? Y'all be telling too much. These You have to have boundaries. You don't have to tell a man just because you're fucking him everything that there is to know about you. You also don't tell him about your past. This is another thing women do too much. You want to tell him, oh, well, you know, I slept with 18 men. And, you know, so-and-so was did, did this and that, you know, and when I was in college, you know, I, I had sex with another woman just to experiment. OK, why would you tell him that? Why would you tell him anything about your past people that you experienced these situations? That's not his business. He don't need to know. The only thing he needs to know is stuff that is going to directly impact him and your relationship. That means if like if you have kids, you know, he should know that if you have some kind of terminal illness or something, you know, some STD or something, he, you know, that might be something that you should share. Um, but other than like details of your prior sex life and your prior relationship, he don't need to know all that. That's none of his business. How many men you slept with or who, what women you slept with? Nothing. None of that is his business. The abortions you had, I don't women be telling men this kind of stuff. I'll just be like, you, you tripping. I don't know. The topic is, is uh, setting boundaries. So I'm talking about some ways that women do not set boundaries and things that they do that are a huge mistake. I'm like, you know, what's real interesting about the body count, what you call the body count is, okay, if you have a, a high one and you are a very skilled lover because you had all that practice, uh, they like what you can do, but they don't want to hear about, you know, how you learned it. And uh, that's always been interesting because then if you haven't had a high body count or you don't know what you're doing in bed, they're going to get mad at you about that. And, you know, say you're boring and you're frigid and 
That's why they need to cheat because you don't know what you're doing. So it's like, you know, you you up on a creek either way. So my thing is this. Do be up the creek in a way that lay, leaves you intact so that when you move on from him, you he don't have all this dirt on you. See, y'all be thinking, you don't be thinking right. You can't be leaving no man behind with all that kind of information, not an information age. He, every some shit that you tell him, he gonna go and put it on Facebook or put it on some, you know, revenge, revenge website or something. Don't let him take naked pictures of you. Don't let him make videos of y'all screwing. Don't do anything that could hurt you later if you decide to run for public office. Don't think in advance. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Have your boundaries in place. So that you don't mess up your life by trying to please some knucklehead. Okay. And okay, I'm a well, the hour is up, but I'm gonna finish this part. Um, your physical or sexual boundaries. Let's talk about that. A lot of you women think that you have to do everything that he wants you to do in bed because that's your man, that's your husband, that's your boyfriend, whatever. You think that you have to do all that he wants to please him. Or if you don't do it, that he'll go get it done somewhere else. And the guys love to say that. And so you guys who who don't have any boundaries, you, like I said, you absorb that fear, you absorb that threat, and then you act on it by giving him what he wants because you are afraid of being alone and you're afraid of rejection. Remember, we talked about that at the top of the show. And in reality... Any man who would treat you like that and threaten you with with the relationship in order to coerce you into giving him some sex act that you're not comfortable with doing, but, you know, he's threatening to pull the relationship away if you do, you need to let him go because he's not respecting you. To him, you are merely a vehicle for him to, to release himself in. And you know what? I'm trying to be polite, but you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, he could just go and hire somebody. You doing it for free. But he just want to get his freak on and he's threatening you with a relationship in order to let, to make you do it. See, so you're, you 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 got to. Yeah, it's even worse than that, Felicia. It's <laughs> it's even worse. But I'm um, you guys really have to stop letting them get in your head like that. And then time boundaries, you know, you have to get time to be alone. You deserve time to be alone with your kids. You got to tell them, no, stop following me to the bathroom. Go do something with yourself. With your man, the same thing. You know, they'd be like, well, you know, I can't find my socks. Well, then go sockless, motherfucker, or stop at Walmart and buy some more. What you want from me? Do I look like the sock detective? I know where every fucking sock is that you had. See, that's what makes me go off, and then people never want to ask me about socks ever again. I'm like, mm mm. Don't ask me for shit. Where you put your shit? Where it's just shit. Where your shit is is where you left it. Don't ask me. So I look like a fucking bloodhound. I'm gonna be sniffing out your funky, stinky ass socks. Please get out of here. I'm telling you, these people be to be doing the most. And then the last thing, because we're gonna talk. Then the next time I'll continue this, and we're gonna talk about um, what you actually do, the steps you actually take to establish boundaries. Because I need to give you guys some words and. Uh, We'll do that, but you see, my voice is kind of is is um, is going away. But um, I've been talking too much today. Let's talk about limits on what you share of a personal nature. Now I talked about finances a little bit, um, but you also have to keep limits on what you talk about about your family members. Okay, I've heard women tell their boyfriends when their daughter started her period, when their daughter started, you know, having sex. Why would you tell him that? I'm telling you, these chicks are like, (laughs) yeah, they do. And then, of course, you know, I mean, like, what was your thinking when you was doing that? You know, now you got him focusing on your daughter's genitals. You're dumb. You need to stop talking. You tell talk too damn much. And what makes you think your daughter wants everybody to know that? That's a personal thing. If she wanted him to know, she would tell him. I'm telling you, these mothers, some of these mothers, are just something's wrong with them. They want to be bonded to these men so tight. They don't have shit going on in their life. They don't have nothing to talk about. So they talk about other people. So y'all need to have boundaries too with your friends, especially if your friend got a boyfriend or husband and she's that mouthy kind, of, you know, that likes to share everything with her man. Oh, you know, I don't keep secrets from, from my man, you know. 
We tell everything. Once she says some shit like that, you don't tell her ass shit. Don't tell her nothing. If you do, you're dumb. And then your boundary needs to be up to keep her, you know, yo, what you tell her, just tell her little basic shit. Don't tell her any details because she's going to run and tell that nigga. You know what I mean? And then the next, he's going to have all kind of dirt on you that he doesn't need to have. Don't do that. Don't do it. I'm trying to tell you. So y'all just, you know, you guys don't be thinking. You think well, it's just harmless. You know, that's my friend. You know, we just have a girl talk. No, you have a girl talk with her and her nigga. That's what you're doing because she's going to tell us ass everything. And these men who know they have a stupid woman like that, they're going to keep asking herself, oh, so then what she say? Well, then what happened? Well, how is so-and-so like the next day or two? Did she like it? Is dude, you know, dude, what's dude doing? You know, he's going to be asking questions and she's going to be feeding him information because she don't have nothing to talk about. She don't have nothing going on in her life. So she got to borrow shit from yours. I made a video about that too, to, that breaks that down. But, you know, it, the, the boundary issue, this perfectly ties in. So I want to bring that up again. But yes, when men are gossipy and not only that, they help still, you know, he could take the information that your friend gave him about you, especially if it's something about your money or, you know, your property or your body or something like that. See, or what you like in bed. Cause you know, how women get together and they talk, girl, he did this and that trick, little chicken. I was like, Ooh, wee, you know? So, right. So she's going to run and tell him that. Right. So he's going to run and tell his single buddy. And then the buddy's going to try to get at your friend. And the next thing you know, your friend's going to be all used up and her money getting ripped, you know, getting ripped off and, and tricked into some shit. And it's all because of you with your big ass mouth. See, telling your man everything. Y'all think it's going to stop with them. Men lie. Men talk about everything. They talk about women. They talk about other men. They talk about everything. They gossip worse than women do. I don't know why women like to think that women are the gossip. That's the lie men be telling you. Those motherfuckers gossip about everything. They go to have a drink. All they do is talk about women. They don't talk about what they do. They don't talk about some business, some money they're going to make, some business plans or something. Nope. They talk about pussy. That's what they talk about. And who, who, who had it, who did it, what they're going to do with it, how they're going to get some more of it, you know, with the pussy they cast aside, the pussy they toe up, they just love to talk about pussy. That's what they do. So you guys, um, you know, I know this was a lot. I just came out of a lot of information to you and a lot of game. But the bottom line is, you know, listen to this. If you get a chance, listen to this again. Make notes. Understand the areas where you don't have strong boundaries and then write down some things that you should do, try to do to change that. OK, make I don't know, maybe three things for each item. Like say you have trouble uh, establishing. Personal space boundaries, OK, even with your children. OK, what can you do? Uh, you can start saying, you know, this is mommy's private time. This is where I'm going to be by myself. I will set this timer. When this timer goes off, I will come and be with you again. But while this is going ding, 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 I'm waiting for it to go off. Don't you bother me. Don't you call my name. Don't you want nothing. You sit here and watch this movie. You know, whatever. This is my time for me. Just for me. Don't you ask me for nothing until that timer goes off. But you know how many women are feel guilty about doing that? They can't do it. Oh, but my kids might need me. Unless there's a fire or somebody broke in the house, they don't need your ass. You know, stop you you, you blowing up your head. Um, you know, things like that. So that sets the time better. So their children learn to respect your privacy. They learn to respect that their mother needs time alone. They learn to respect that mommy has a life that does not include me. And that's good for her. It makes her feel good. See, kids have to, you have to teach your children things like that. And a lot of women don't. So anyway, I see it's darkening here. I've been talking for so freaking long, but um, I want to thank everybody for coming through. It was really, really wonderful for our third thing. We'll be back again next Wednesday night. I'll talk about something different and I'll come back to um, this. I don't know. I think I have some blank topics on week four and five and you know we'll tie all these ends together but you guys do that homework in the meantime and start thinking about when you get ready to do something you get ready to say something we get ready to agree with somebody or you let somebody talk to you some kind of way you feel bad inside i want you to start connecting the dots okay why did this happen what boundary did i need to put in place um 
that so that this does not happen to me again. Okay, that's what I want you to be thinking about over the next couple of weeks until we come back to this. And I'm going to go over the like I said, I'm going to give you some words so that you uh, can have some tools to use. And I don't care if you parrot me word for word. If it's going to help you figure out how to set boundaries and and maintain them, then that would be good. Okay, so. Um, Deb Cooper from survivingdating.com. We're in month of May. We got like video a day uh, for the next two weeks till May 15th, dating advice. And then every Wednesday through the end of the month, we're doing these live streams. I may do it longer. I don't know, because we'll, we'll see how it goes. I kind of like this. My only problem is my throat. <coughs> Talk too much. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye-bye.